Oh, we have a lot of controversy with this next golf course. It, there's a lot to like about it. There's a lot to know about it. And most importantly, there's information that we have to give you about Blue Heron Pines Golf Club. Now, there's an 18-hole golf course here, and it's spread out. And you're going to have to visit for yourself to check out this pretty decent golf course here. It's it's in Eagles country and it's a Ron Jaworski course so we walked right in the golf shop because we didn't have a tee time and this course can get extremely busy. There was a couple tee times available so we just walked right in and it's pretty easy to book it online uh, but for the most part sometimes it's a little bit better to see if there's some deals out there just walking right in. We're going to start off with the facts of this golf course. It was open in 1993 and one thing that just jumps out of you, they identified themselves as the top golf course in South Jersey for 18 holes public 18 hole golf course. Designed by Stephen K, which is a well known golf designer, uh, he's also listed in a couple of our other videos. It takes full advantage of the natural beauty of the pine lands, mystic tree lines, and breathtaking venues. So, this, this course, I, I will say, the layout is pretty well. Um, it's up there with some of the other courses in the area. You're going to pay 100 bucks to play the course easily. A lot of water on the course. And I will say the layout of the course is pretty unique. Uh, it was built by Stephen Kay and Doug Smith. The greens are bent grass and the golf season is open year-round here at Blue Herons Pines. Uh, you know... I'm going to start off by saying some of the golf now rates are pretty reasonable. You can get them for about $52 just looking at tomorrow rates. Uh, but for the most part, $80, $90 golf course. And it's well worth it. These Ron Jaworski courses, and Ron Jaworski has a few courses. Now, he bought this course. He didn't build it in 1993. We're going to go through over that in just a second. But they take very good care of their courses but one thing to note, you're going to want to bring your own water. You're going to want to eat before it unless you're willing to spend big money uh, I think it was seven dollars Gatorade and a, a, a bag of chips so which is you know you, know, you got to bring a Gatorade and bag of chips no big deal but there's no water on this course which is my point of the conversation but you can absolutely go after it on some of these par fives it doesn't play that long from the back tees from the black tees which are the back ones it stretches 6810 yards with a rating of 72.2 and a slope of 133. The blue tees is a par, well, it's a par 72 across all the tees, of course. But it's 6,619 yards with a rating of 71 and a slope of 130. The white tees, which we played um, 6,027 yards with a slope of 127. The gold tees stretch 5,800 yards and the red tees with 5,100 yards. Now, this was the nicest part of the golf course here. It's the par three over some water. A very, very gettable birdie opportunity. Or you could throw it all away and put it in the water. Um, I'll tell you what, this is the nicest part of the golf course. Going right into some par fours here, but I will say... You can find yourself all over this golf course and still have a shot over some of these pine land trees. And to talk a little bit about the history, opened in 1993, Ron Jaworski, the quarterback um, football player from the Eagles, bought the course. He owns a couple other courses in New Jersey and South Jersey area. Uh, but one thing to note that there was another 18 holes here uh, on the other side of the street, which in, we ended up playing there a long, long time ago, and I think that was the better of the two golf courses here that was closed and that did not stay open for long just a few years this right here this is probably another favorite part of the golf course uh swinging into that back nine some of the holes were well worth the price of admission and some of them were not that exciting uh that last par four was not that it was a par five they did an interesting job uh little things they could definitely improve on but for the most part, it's a very aggressive golf course uh, with a lot of water on it and a lot of fairway bunkers you can find yourself in. Now, if you played Blue Heron and it's in better shape or it's in worse shape, let us know in the comment section. We're trying to hit all the golf courses in the world, and this is just one of them. And Blue Heron, I'll tell you what, it gets a lot of play. This place is extremely busy. If you get there early, depending on your tee time, they'll just send you out. They'll tr they'll try to tell you, hey, you know, you got to pay a little extra to go off early. But for the most part, uh, Frank will 
you know, he's not too happy about it, but you know, he knows the rules. If you linger around there with a late tea time that's a little bit cheaper, long story short, I think you'll end up getting it. Um, that's what we ended up doing here at World Twilight Golf. We've got to do everything we can because we're trying to hit every golf course possible throughout the states. That's going to do it for our list. Keep a lookout for more videos to come. Go fly. This is World Twilight Golf. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch.